Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me back. The next panel we will talk about is the main view panel. I'm talking about this panel where we see our edits and what the viewer will see in the end. I will close this folder for now. So let's start with the small panel here. It's the size of the preview screen. We can also zoom out with the mouse wheel. Then, it will show me 25%. To zoom in, scroll forward with the mouse wheel. If we want it to be adjusted to the panel, we can choose Fit. This way, if I move the panels like this, the preview screen will adjust accordingly. Now let's learn how to move this panel while working in Zoom. I will zoom in and press the middle click. As you can see, the mouse cursor icon has changed. It means that we are now using the hand tool. We will talk about it later. This tool can be selected using the H key. Or you can reach it with the mouse's middle click and move the screen. We can also move this area with a long press on the spacebar and dragging the screen with a left click. I want you to practice with me. Let's hold the spacebar and move the screen. We'll always use this, so you should get used to it. If you press space once, it will play the video. Don't worry about this if it's happening. Bring the time indicator to the beginning. And if you've played too much and don't understand where you are, you can choose Fit, which will fix the display. What is a resolution? This is the quality of the preview. Now we are working on full, and if I select quarter, we will notice that the preview quality has decreased. If we zoom in, then we can see it more clearly. Now bring it back to full. Now the preview shows the video in its maximum quality. And if we choose half, we will see the quality drop slightly. And so on. This helps us a lot if we work with many layers and effects because it will be challenging for After Effects to show us the preview. This, of course, also depends on the strength of your computer. As you can see in this example, there are a lot of effects in the project, and when I press space to see what I did, it will take a lot of time for After Effects to show me the preview. But I want to see the movement of the animation I created, so I don't need to see the preview in its highest quality. Therefore I can work on a quarter and see the movement I made. Okay, so for now, we'll bring it back to full and move on. The next thing we will talk about is the fast previews. As you can see in the example, it presents our preview in different forms, making it easier for After Effects to present the animation I made. And this is the difference between the different options. I prefer to turn this setting off. It can be annoying to see those pixels every time I move the time indicator. The next thing is a transparent grid. And it's just a default background. Let's turn off the video to see the background I'm talking about. It is important to understand that this is not a functional background. As you can see, I don't have any background layer in the project. If I click here, I can see my preview without a background. I will turn the layer back on. The next icon shows the layer's borders and the paths created during animation. As you can see in the example, when there are many layers, sometimes it is very uncomfortable to see all the borders of all the layers. So with an excellent shortcut, Ctrl Shift H, I can turn the borders off for a second, continue the animation, and then turn them back on. With the same shortcut, Ctrl Shift H. I am moving on to the next icon, Region of Interest. We will use it if we want to crop our composition. There are two ways to do this. The first is through the composition settings, and the second is through the region of interest function. First, let's remember how to do it through the composition settings. But before that, I have a question. What is the keyboard shortcut to open the composition settings?
so if you answer correctly, well done. For those who are not, don't worry, you will remember it soon. So if I press Ctrl K, the settings of the composition I'm working on will open. From here, I can decrease and increase the composition size. I can write down a certain number here, like 600 by 200, and then I will click on the gray area and see the crop. I will cancel it, and let's say I don't know the specific size. For example, I need to crop it to see only the leopard's head. In such cases, we will use region of interest. I will click on the icon and select the area I want to keep. I can adjust the size, of course. And to confirm the crop, I must go to Composition and then click Crop Comp to Region of Interest. Now the composition is cut precisely to what I selected earlier. I will press Ctrl Z to undo the cropping. And now, let's see how to cancel the selected area. So I select the area once again. And now I want to cancel the selection. As you can see here, I can do it by clicking on the icon while holding the Alt key. Notice that when we select this tool, the mouse cursor looks like a cross, which means I'm using this tool. To continue working on the project, I must uncheck this tool. Don't forget about it. Now we will talk about the different grids and guides that help us to work more precisely. If I click on this icon, I get all the options here. Let's start with the first one. Title Safe Action. I will turn off the video to see it better. It's a grid that adapts to any composition size I'm working on. For example, if I change the composition size to 1080 by 1080, then the grid will adjust itself according to the new size of the composition. This grid is helpful both because it shows me where the center is and because it shows me boundaries that I shouldn't go beyond. The shortcut to this grid is the apostrophe key, the key next to the enter key. Let's press it together and get used to bringing this grid and turn it off because we use it a lot. We will move to the next grid, proportional grid. This grid divides the composition according to the pieces that I will choose. We control the division from Edit, Preferences, under the Grid and Guides categories. As you can see here, you can also change the color of the lines. You can also change the shape of the lines. And here, you can divide the grid into different pieces. I'm currently going back to how it was before. The shortcut to this grid is Alt and Apostrophe key. Practice those two shortcuts. The next grid is simply called Grid. Let's click on it. This grid can be displayed together with another grid. As you can see, we can still see the previous grid. I'll turn it off with the shortcut, Alt and Apostrophe key. So this grid is helpful for those who like to work very precisely by pixels. The shortcut for this grid is Control and the Apostrophe key. The last thing under the grids is the rollers. Just like in Photoshop or Illustrator, the shortcut for rollers is Control R. We can see the rollers on the sides here. We can create guides from them. I will turn off the previous grid. And now you can see the guide I created from the rollers. To lock the guides, you can go to View, Lock Guides. That way, I won't be able to move them. It's very convenient when there are more shapes and layers in the project. To cancel the lock, go again to View, Lock Guides. A nice shortcut to make guides disappear without deleting them is Control and the semicolon key. It's this key. So practice it with me. 
If I want to delete them completely, I can grab them one by one and throw them off the screen. Or go to View. Clear Guides. And to make the rollers disappear, you can do it from here or use a shortcut we learned, Control R. A nice thing to know about the guides is that they can be saved. For the sake of the example, I will create some guides here. Then I will go to View, Export Guides, and I will find a folder where I will save the guide. I'll keep it here and call it Class Zero Guides. I'll click Save, and now let's say I opened another After Effects project with no guides and rollers. I can go to View, Import Guide, and now I need to find the guide I just saved and click Open. Very cool. I'll delete the saved guides because we won't use them today. Now let's practice together the shortcuts of the grids we learned. Remember that all the shortcuts will work well only if you are in the English language on your computer. For title safe action, press the apostrophe key. For the grid with the pixels, press control and the apostrophe key. For a proportional grid, press alt and the apostrophe key. For rollers, press control R. To create guides, simply drag them from the rollers. To make the guides disappear without deleting them, press Ctrl and the semicolon key. And to delete them completely, we will go to View. Clear Guides. Now let's turn the video back on and move on to the next thing. We don't use these. This icon captures the frame we are standing on. For example, I will stand on this frame and click on this icon. It captured the frame. Now I can go to another point in my composition. Click here and see the frame I captured. I can compare it with the frame I'm standing on now. If we press Alt, then we will see the image one on top of the other. It's mostly good for creating looping animations. And now, Let's talk about this part. This part tells us at what point in time we are on our timeline. Remember that our composition is 3 minutes long, so if I move the time indicator here, I will stand on a point at a time that is 4 seconds and 13 frames. I'll zoom in, move here, and we'll understand even more what's going on here. Now I'm on the second 4. If you don't see it as seconds as I do, you can reach here. Hold Ctrl and click here. Then it will change your numbers to seconds like mine. Move the time indicator and practice it a bit. I can click here and choose to arrive at a specific time point. For example, I will reach the fourth second. Remember, it's hours, it's minutes, it's seconds, and it's frames. Let's say I want to go to the 4th, 2nd, and 6th frame. Excellent! If I want to get to the beginning of the timeline, then I can write 0. So we've learned everything we need to know about the main view panel. We're moving on to our next panel, the Composition Timeline Panel. See you in the next class.